the US White House has just demanded that NASA develop a new time zone for the moon, the Coordinated Lunar Time, or LTC for short. But does the moon really need a time zone of its own? And if so, why? Here on Earth, our day lasts 24 hours, and this dictates when we eat and when we sleep. But a lunar day, so from one sunrise to the next day's sunrise, on average lasts 29.5 Earth days. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't like the sound of staying up 20 days straight. So what can we do? Hi Space Cats, I'm Dr. Maggie Lou, and in this week's video, let's talk about why the moon needs its own time. Lunar time refers to the time on a clock on the moon. And as of right now, there is no standard for lunar time. Every country is using their own time. The Americans are running their activities on US time zones, and the Chinese use China standard time. But like all time zones on Earth, this is linked to Coordinated Universal Time, UTC, which is the global standard here on Earth. When we look at our phones or our watches, we know exactly what time it is. And quite often, if they're digital, they'll automatically adjust as we move between time zones. When I step off the plane in Los Angeles, my phone will automatically tell me what the local time is. But when we ask an astronaut what time it is over there on the moon, well, the answer's not quite clear. So far, things have been easy because activities on the moon are few and far between, making them easy to adjust for individually. But also, all these activities have been independent of each other. In the next decade or so, however, we're going to see a flurry of activity on the moon. In this year alone, there have been 11 lunar missions that have happened or are upcoming. And with the ambitious Artemis missions just around the corner, well, next year for Artemis 2, where the first crewed Artemis astronauts will orbit around the moon, and in 2026 for the Artemis 3 missions, which are planned to land the first astronauts near the lunar south pole, there is absolutely no question that we need to establish a standard lunar time. Possibly this should be tied to UTC, or should it? Defining a lunar time sounds simple. It should be easy, right? We just set it to UTC and force everyone else to use it. Done. Well, not quite. You see, the time on the moon ticks at a different rate from here on Earth. This was explained by Einstein in his general relativity. In the theory, there is a well-known concept known as time dilation, which states that time slows down in regions of strong gravity. So imagine if you had a pair of identical twins, one who lived on the surface of the Earth and the other who lived on the 163rd floor of the Burj Khalifa. The gravity is slightly stronger as you approach the center of our planet. So the time, as experienced by the twin on the ground, would tick slightly slower, and thus make this twin slightly younger than the twin up high where the gravity is weaker. Since the moon's gravity is just a sixth of the Earth's, you'd expect time to pass quicker there, about 58.7 microseconds faster each day to be exact. Now, this might not sound like a lot, but in practical terms, it's massive. GPS satellites are the best example of where time dilation becomes important. These satellites are up in high orbits where the gravity is weaker, and so time passes slightly faster due to this effect. Without correcting the effects of time dilation, our GPS satellites won't work. GPS satellites are equipped with atomic clocks that are incredibly precise, measuring time to within a billionth of a second. The satellites transmit signals that contain information about their location and the exact time that the signals were sent. These signals are then picked up by GPS receivers, like on your car or on your phone. The atomic clocks on the GPS satellites already account for the differences in time due to time dilation. But if they didn't, it could lead to positioning errors of more than 10 kilometers per day. If two spacecraft were to attempt to dock to one another, with one running on Earth time and the other on lunar time, this time discrepancy could cause them to miss each other or even crash. 
But positioning isn't the only thing that we need to worry about. Precision timekeeping is essential for cybersecurity and ensuring that data is secure between transmissions. Many encryption algorithms and even digital signatures and certificates, like that little lock symbol on your web URL, these rely on timestamps to ensure that data packets are not intercepted and manipulated. Accurate time helps in synchronizing the encryption keys between the sender and the receiver, making this process much more secure. So directly linking lunar time to UTC might not be a great idea. Over time, these time measurements will get more and more out of sync. Moon time will always be out of sync with the time experienced by anyone back here on Earth. But fixing the time to correct for the effects of time dilation isn't easy either because eventually we'll be building GPS satellites around the moon too and they'll have a different time dilation compared to atomic clocks on the lunar surface. So where should lunar time be set relative to? On Earth, we also have Daylight Savings, a biannual event shifting the clock forward by one hour to maximize daylight hours and reduce the need for artificial lighting and save energy. Thankfully, since a day on the moon is 29.5 Earth days long, it's unlikely that lunar time would adopt that. And in any case, most countries have already dropped this concept. Anyway, with so many more moon missions coming, it seems it's more important than ever to get a standard loon time set in place. We don't want a repeat of the Mars Climate Orbiter mission, where the mix-up of metric and imperial measurements between the engineers and the scientists only cost NASA $125 million. Anyway, that's all I have time for. Thank you to my YouTube Perks members for supporting this video. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to leave me a like, share and subscribe.